What's up, everybody? I'm Duke James. This is Zanzibar. Alright, so I'm waiting for these cores to be done. This province has already built a garrison rank 1 and irrigation rank 1. So I just got that cord, and this province is already a major center of trade, so it's gone from an important center of trade to a major center of trade now. And it is trading. Apparently not very well, negative 330 ducats. I assume that'll, uh, hopefully recover. In the meantime, while waiting for those cores, I went ahead and attacked Lundu. I'm going to take these four provinces. Gives me a little bit of aggressive expansion, but that should go away by the time I want to fight them again. So these four provinces I'm going to sell back to these three countries. And I should make a decent amount of money doing that. I'm also going to go ahead and do this nobility reform. So this reform will decrease noble gravity. I believe it also decreases noble wealth, which is all that stuff in the middle. Unfortunately, it also decreases noble investment in a feudal levies and monthly hierarchy, but it also decreases, really the most important thing is it decreases autonomy from nobility and noble power from wealth. So, the nobility get power from how much money they make. This should reduce the amount of money they make and the amount of power they get from wealth. And then they get autonomy from nobility power so this reducing their power will reduce their autonomy and then it also reduces their the, the base calculation for that so hopefully this reduces uh, their oh it reduces my autonomy uh, it also reduces my legitimacy and my stability Jesus, negative 60 noble loyalty, negative 5 hierarchy, negative 60 relations between the aristocrats and the state, lose 4 stability, 20 legitimacy. Ouch, but I'm, I'm able to do these two supports, so that'll get me back to 1. No, that'll get me back to negative 2. I did want to go ahead and expand the bureaucracy, but that's going to cost stability, so I'm going to get my stability up before I do that stuff. That puts the nobility at 11%, so... Let's see, I can overlook 10 abuse. I'm going to arrange a strategic marriage, because they're pretty much in the tank, and... Uh, yeah, they're at 23%. And they have control of my country right now anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and promote the aristocratic faction to get them back to 33%. 33% is 17% um, less than what I want to be at. I want to be around 50, so it's still pretty low, but... I don't want to disown an unpopular relative because I don't want my legitimacy to go down anymore. This increases monthly autonomy change by 0.04. kind of rough. Alright, these three are now all cores, so where's my range? Alright, unfortunately this stuff up here is still too far. Wow, even this province. I want, I get a claim on this province and this province now. And those are still those two are still too far away. It's kind of crazy, actually. I'm improving relations with the Mamluks. Because there's somebody that I want to trade with, so I want my relations to be as high with them as possible. I guess I'll just have to take some province over there and... core that to get closer to those other ones. I 
Alright, will you accept now? Yes, you will. They won't give me war reps, but that's fine. I should get a lot of money from selling these provinces. That's the idea, at least. Alright, I want to sell... I was going to give these two provinces to Butua in the war, but Butua has about 800 ducats, so I'll see if they can... If they'll buy those. Yeah, they'll buy them. They'll buy this province for 400 gold, and uh, this province for 425. I'll sell this province to uh, Barre. 150 ducats for that province. I'll sell this province back to Lundu. Tanks my prestige, but... Money for prestige. I'll do that trade. Alright, 256 for that, and I get rid of those provinces. Hopefully me giving this province to these guys gets some friction between Lundu and these guys, because they are allied, so... Maybe I won't have to fight these guys every time I fight Lundu. But that fills up my treasury. Wait, what? Did they... Oh, they're not transferring trade power. Okay, that's fine. I thought they broke the alliance. Oh, okay, yeah. My legitimacy decreases because of stability. And delete a couple troops. Move these guys up here. Let's see, I have a rank one capital in my capital. And we're the largest city on the subcontinent. That's nice. And an important center of learning. Autonomy is increasing in my capital, so it's going to be bad everywhere for a little bit until my legitimacy gets back up. Fortunately, my heir has claim strength 100, so that's good. And he's a 3, 4, 5. Because my old guy died. And then I gave control back to the bureaucrats. They're around 14 or 15 every year. What would a rank 2 capital cost? Oh, 636 ducats. What? That's cheap. Yeah, that gives some more yearly centralization. Doubles the glo global CE reduction from 6 to 12. Doubles yearly centralization from 3 to 6. Plus a little bit more prestige. For 600 ducats? Sure. I will pay that all day long. I want to annex Marina, but there's no way I'm going to get my average overseas autonomy down if I do that. So I have to wait to do that. It's been a while since I've done a census, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't really grab that many more provinces, but we have 4.7 million tenants, growing by 29,000 per year. 90,000 nomads, 526,000 residents. Natural change of negative 600, so I should probably figure out where they're dying. 
build amenities. There's a lot of... It's probably the provinces that are, like, random. Provinces that randomly have, like, 10,000 people living in them. Like this one. That's probably where most of the people are dying. 15,000 burgers. 17,000 clergy. 53,000 nobility. Food deficit, massive food surplus, food fiber surplus, a little bit of fuel deficit, raw materials deficit, is that a good surplus? A little bit of a luxury deficit, consumer surplus, military is pretty good, massive naval surplus, industrial surplus, knowledge deficit. Some of those deficits have closed. Go ahead and invest in uh, academic property. Try and get knowledge production up. All right, we have an, expedi uh, an expedition. We have a province in South Africa now. Ooh, it's a nice province. It's not the Cape province, but it is next to the Cape province and should have good resources and people in it if it's this size. 24,000 peasants. This should update. So this is probably not going to be final. 24,000 peasants as of right now. The property hasn't uh, updated, so... Unfortunately... These are not, these provinces are not considered overseas, so they're going to add to my autonomy. <laughs> but I'd rather take them than give them to Euro a European power, so. Yeah, that's one of the four other provinces that have natural locations on it, so. I'm happy with that. It's only minor, but it's not bad. Yeah, the Cape, it borders Cape, so I could start colonizing Cape next and make sure that I get this province with a major location effect and important harbor effect. Also might have gold or ivory or something like that. Okay, so I want I want some provinces in the Arabian Node over here. I want well, I want this province. I don't think I can't actually take this province, and I can't win a war against these guys. I don't think because they have a combined. They're allied with Muntafik and Isfahan, and they have a combined twenty six thousand troops. So if they, I only have thirteen thousand troops. So if they send all their troops over here, then I'm not gonna win that. With Ormozgan, I want... They have a bunch of these trade provinces, these islands. I want those, but I can't grab those either because of colonial range. So this one's 89 out of 80. This one's 134 out of 80. This one's 136 out of 80. Pretty far away. But, uh, I mean, I can grab these provinces. This one's 76, and this one's 70. They're not particularly good provinces. Well, they're downright horrible provinces, really. Well, I guess I really wouldn't call them horrible provinces, but they're not. They're, they're just not good provinces. They don't get me much. They are in the Arabian node. They don't have commerce, so they don't get me much in the way of trade, but I should at least be able to send ships up here and not have them get massively attritioned. And if they do, I can just send them into these ports to repair before sending them to an actual province with a heart bridge. Okay, we can do the control the Cape mission. So this gives 15% trade efficiency and negative 15% naval maintenance modifier. I'm not going to take that right now because I'm doing state-sponsored commerce, so that would be worthless, actually. So if I take that, I should time it to not promote commerce. I think I'll try to uh, stack that with like this one. 
This one also gives 15% trade efficiency. Those just give settler increase, global trade power, trade power broad, trade power broad. So it looks like only those two give trade efficiency increase. Yeah, so I'll just stack those two at the same time. I'll wait to convert that province until I do some investments in it, because I imagine people are going to leave. So I'll try to take these two provinces. I can finish off exploration, but my dip tech is so far behind, I think I'd rather get a couple of levels of that first. <clears throat> Influence-wise, the aristocrats have control of the country. It's better than the chiefs, but still, I want the bureaucrats to take over. My state reach is 21%, increasing by 0.3. Yeah, I could do this, weaken the tribes a little bit, get two and a half state reach. I think I'm going to promote them. They might get control. I think they won't hold it throughout the year, though. The aristocrats should take control. Yeah, plus 10 clan loyalty. They're at 64. Go ahead and leverage them. Expand our authority. Weaken their power. Give us some state reach. So state reach is now 23.03%. That should help out with the bureaucrats' power in the future. Just slowly building up that state reach. I want to do these tax reforms because... Yeah, just, I mean, more taxes is always good. Enables land tax, tollage, and poll tax. And then uh, less revenue... Wait, no, it's this. It enables the salt excise and timber excise. Plus base welfare, negative 20% tax revenue tra transferred to elites based on power share, negative 5% mana cost of all state taxes, and then some more base tax efficiency. In order to do that reform, you have to do this reform, reform the farm, which gives plus 5% state share of tax revenue, 0.25 base welfare, and negative 0.05 corruption. That also requires 20 bureaucratic influence. So that's my plan, because that's something I can do right now, irregardless of autonomy. And that'll that should give me more money. And then I can use that to, to build more ports. And then I'm building the capital in my capital as well, so that should help out a little bit with autonomy as well. I went ahead and I lowered my taxes. I think dip tech, or my dip taxes were 20. I put it down to 15. Mill, mill taxes were 30. I put it down to 25 just to save some, some mana points. All right, this province has 34,000 peasants, 5,000 residents, 1,000 burghers, 500 nobles, 152 clergy. It has size 93 mines, 57 size farmlands, and 207 size forestries, 100 size fisheries. Not uh, as much industry size as I thought there would be. Just sea salt. It's a different culture and a different religion. Huh, okay. I think I'll just keep sending those expeditions back to South Africa.
I can't go to India yet. That's also another reason why I want to get my Diptech up. I think Diptech 27 unlocks expeditions to southern India. Yeah, 27 is southern India. Alright, they have 12,000 men. Tech 29, so we're the same tech. I'll build uh, another infantry. Get up to 14,000 troops. It's for their capital, the war goal. But I want these provinces. And these are not overseas, so... This one has a harborage, so that's nice. Just to have it, I suppose. What's their navy, actually? Oh, okay, yeah, these two countries. These guys, with all of their provinces at the border of the sea, have three galleys and six transport ships. Bring these ships over there. Let's do light looting. Yeah, they're gonna put their ships in ports. That kind of sucks, because I can't even chain over there. Because this province isn't owned by Ormosgan. Alright, I'll just go directly for their capital. They're going to just sit over here, apparently. Part of the reason why I want to do those reforms as well is because... I make 541 ducats of revenue. 224 of that goes to tax farming. 231 of that goes to corruption. So I can get that tax farming down. I can actually start making a little bit of money. There is a plague in Tunis. This province's commerce industry dropped. This province is losing a lot of money, actually. It's not good. Its trade power went up. I think that might just be because separatism is dropping, actually. There's no European powers over here yet, so I'm not really trading... Not trading exotics or anything with any European powers. Just using those uh, old trade routes through the Mamluks. Can we win this? Our navy morale is a little bit less than theirs. Yeah, we have less... What is that? Tactics? Navy tactics? We have less engagement with, less... Um, Whatever this is. They only have three galleys, so if we lose, then that's really pathetic. I guess they have um, naval ideas. Alright, yeah, we won. <laughs> Only like two of our ships took damage. Can I make them a vassal? That'd be 197 dip, 81% war score. 62 aggressive expansion.
right, probably not. Even that province is too far away. Let's take the next admin tech. Next, so the next admin tech unlocks the next idea group, and that'll either be colonialism or. Grand Fleet. I might risk it and go colonialism. Does Castile still have no ships? Yeah, they still only have five lights. One, they built a galley. I think they built two lights. Why? What? They just have no. I mean, their force limit's only thirty-two, so my force limit's almost double theirs. But they only have half of their force limit built up. I mean, Portugal has one light ship, six galleys, six transports. They're not doing much of anything either. England has okay. England's a little bit better with eight lights, five galleys, sixteen transports, sixty-nine force limit. That's all their coast. And then France has... Okay, France has 22 lights and 11 transports. I don't think France or England are colonizing. Yeah, France is not colonizing at all. Admin, trade, quantity, bureaucracy, standing army, so that's good. So France has the scariest navy out of everybody, but they're not colonizing. England's taking colonialism ideas, which is kind of scary, but... England... I feel like England goes to North America more. And Portugal has exploration. Only the first four, which is really all they need, but they don't have colonialism. Castile has grabbed colonialism, so Castile is really my, my enemy. And they've seemed to have... Yeah, they're taking the coast over here. This is not stuff that I want to get, so I don't really care about that, but eventually they're going to show up down here. If it's just their navy, their apparently poor navy, then that's not much of a fear. Alright, you just want to give me these provinces? Yes, you do. Okay. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. I can't take anything else. So I'll get these provinces, core them, and then that hopefully that gets me in range. I have no admin power for that. My army force limit is 9. But I'm only paying a ducat for being over my force limit. So, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it does kill my manpower, though. Like, I have no manpower reserve because of that. So that is bad. Socotra is building pathing. Okay. Pathing does give commerce increase, but for an island, kind of worthless. Except for that commerce output. Alright, capital rank 2 was built in my capital, so that's now global CE reduction of 12%. And some yearly centralization. 
Yeah, my centralization is definitely not good. A lot of that is due to stability. So I'm getting 0 0.06 from the capital. I'm losing 0 0.2 to noble concessions and the old ways. Eventually I'll stop doing the old ways, so I'll gain that. And then if I get my, if I can get my stability up to positive, which I'm probably not going to do noble reforms for a while until I'm able to do this one. Which is a couple steps away, so I won't have to do that. Centralize the state thing with the nobility. So that should help out a little bit with that. Why are these guys moving terror people over here? Don't move people over here. What are you doing? I might lose these provinces immediately after getting them. I'm going to keep my men over here. So them by themselves, well, they're, they're tech 30. How are they tech, mil tech 30? That's crazy. None of these guys over here are going to be behind on mil tech. None of them have commercialization, but they're good. The Ottoman Empire doesn't have commercialization anymore. It's kind of crazy. I shouldn't, they shouldn't attack me, actually. Let's see, Ethiopia Alliance. I have alliances with Ethiopian Warsingali and Butua, so... They have alliances with Grey Horde and Fars. Yeah, that's 28,000 men, so combined we have more. A lot more, so they shouldn't attack. They just move their troops there. Maybe they might attack Ormoz, Ormozgan, actually. That could be why they move troops there. Alright, I'm gonna do a claim on Lundu's territory. It's gonna end in a year. Oh, Castile now has a... I think they put a merchant over here. And they get a little bit of transfers, tra uh, trade power from downstream in the South African node. Yeah, I definitely want to dominate South Africa. Because the Malacca also flows into South Africa, so if I want to block off trade... Zanj is good, but they could also trade through the Malakas. So this is the bottleneck, really. It's this, and then the Red Sea are the two ways to trade. So I'd like to have a dominant share over here. And if I do lose provinces over here, I can always send light ships to, to try and increase tra my trade power. So it's just the, if I cut out, if I control like 90% of the provinces over here, then... I can cut them out. Force them to trade through the province. Hey, Butua grabbed this province. It's actually good. 214,000 people here, so... I can't hold this province, so them taking this province is actually pretty good, because that's 214,000 more people that I can... Uh, trade with, just as long as they don't grab the coast. I'm surprised I haven't gotten a province through that. It's supposed to be like a... It's like a... I, I don't know if it's a random event, but... I have bordered this province for a long time. Trade dispute against Zabrulistan. Cool. Oh, I also have these uh, ships over here. Let's go ahead and put them back to protecting trade over there. It's a couple ducats I'm missing out on. And my general died. I'm almost um, on par with Miltech. 
Miltec 30 is where the what it's currently at. Yeah, so I'm also on on almost on par with admin tech too. So I'm not really behind on those. Not ahead, but I'm not behind. Dip tech I'm really behind though. I'll grab the next dip tech. That actually increases trade range. Alright, I'm going to end this part here and uh, pick up in the next part. And then uh, go from there. Try to figure out if there's anyone I can attack, and then uh, go from there. So, thanks for watching. Goodbye.